Let's go. Take me live, YouTube. Take me live. Here we go. We got playback. Check, check, unit. Are you with me on a Monday night, 325, 24? Are you amplified? Check one, two, check one, two. BC coming straight at you. I sound pretty good on your end. So I'm going to go back to my end. I have to have my own playback so I can hear myself scream. Thank you. Check, check. One, two. BC, do you got yourself? Yes, I do. Beautiful. Just brewed a fresh coffee, if you don't mind. Let me just make this up a little bit with the Dunkin' Extra Extra that I got. Hold on, please. Hold on. Magic Potion. There you go. Look at that, huh? Damn. Sexy like Kayla Braxton right there. Beautiful. Hey, this is to all of you guys, man. Join in live throughout this next hour. And for the thousands that'll catch this afterwards over the next 24 hours. Salute to every single one of you guys, man. Live for the Raw preview. We're also going to talk SmackDown's rating. We're going to talk Drew McIntyre visiting Mindy's in Chicago. We're going to talk Alexa Bliss's return. We believe it now to be SummerSlam for Alexa Bliss. And a whole lot more we will be discussing. So salute to my unit live on this Monday evening. Let's rock out for the next hour. What do you say? Salute. Yeah. A little bit more, if you don't mind. There we go. Just a little bit, a little bit. A little bit, a little, little, little bit. As Randy Savage would say, just a little bit. Yeah. That's just a little bit, yeah, and it's just a tip, yeah, and the cream always rises to the top. Salute. Mm. I'll tell you what I got to do, though. I got to shut your playback off, guys. No offense, but all right. I was hearing my own echo. All right. Where do you want to start off, man? We'll save the raw card for now. How's that? We'll start with the uh, SmackDown rating. Now, this is why uh, Cody Rhodes fans, you're not going to want to hear this. Listen, I, I give Cody the utmost respect always. I was shouting from a mountaintop at 39 that he has to win that match and the title. It was Cody or bust. So I feel you. But Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns tanked the rating this week for SmackDown. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns together could not equal what The Rock did. In fact, they lost over 100,000 viewers from what The Rock tried to give them last Friday. The Rock pulling uh, the 2-3-4-0, oh, which is still on the low end, by the way. And Monday Night Raw is pulling in the lowest ratings of WrestleMania history and Monday Night Raw history for Mania season. So the ratings across the board for, for WWE tanking. And SmackDown, The Rock could only do so much, but he popped their biggest rating. Cody and Roman together lost over 100,000. So The Rock pulled 2-3-4-0, and Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns pulled 2-2-3-5. So together, your main event for WrestleMania Night 2 does not equal one Rock. So now, can we cut the bullshit, please, with the, The Rock's a part-timer, and he shouldn't be a part of WWE. The Rock is taking a roster space. The Rock's a bully. The Rock is egotistical. The Rock is gonna destroy WWE. Can we cut the bullshit? Can we all just be honest and say The Rock is fucking entertaining more than anybody on the roster, on last year's roster, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. The Rock is the fucking guy 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and it doesn't have anything to do with The Rock showing up. The dude has not had a match in 12 fucking years. Seth Rollins had years to try to get to The Rock's level. It's nowhere close. Seth Rollins has negative 3% of The Rock's charisma and personality. Can we be honest? What, is it something I said? Is BC just spitting facts or what? We can love Seth Rollins. We can do the fucking sing-along. Oh, e oh Oh, e oh Yeah, we can do the sing-along. We can have a regular Disney on ice. 
but can we cut the bullshit and act like Seth Rollins? If The Rock wasn't here this year, Seth was going to be the next Rock. Can we cut the bullshit? Do you think Cody Rhodes was ever going to truly be the next John Cena, much less The Rock? Cody Rhodes is the first Cody Rhodes. Good for him. That'll be 16% of what The Rock is. The highest of Cody's of highs will be 16% of The Rock. It's just the facts of life. Stop acting like The Rock here is ruining mania. His ego is out of control. The Rock's ego is up. Why is he in the main event, man? Why does he have to take a big match, man? Why? Why? Because he's the most fucking entertaining person on the roster. That's why. These fucking idiots. They get their little fucking cheetah puff hands on the keyboard. And then they start saying stupid shit like, well, put The Rock at the Elimination Chamber at 5 a.m. We don't need him at Mania. Meanwhile, The Rock is popping your highest rating. Meanwhile, The Rock is giving us the most entertaining segments of all fucking time. Or at least the last 10 fucking years, I should say. Because they used to pull this shit all the time back in the AE. In the last 10 fucking years, The Rock has given you the best segments. And you want to stuff them at 5 a.m. at Elimination Chamber. So Cody and Seth and Tazawa can get their time. Ivar! Ivar needs the time. You think The Rock coming back once in 12 fucking years to have a match is taking up Tazawa's spot? Do you think Ivar and John Gargano and Rico Shea are not over because The Rock came back? Are you fucking stupid? Are you fucking dumb? Are you fucking idiotic? How many times did your parents drop you on your fucking dome piece? These fucking idiots. Still, after all the facts are out there, after Rock is popping fucking ratings, after The Rock is giving you the best fucking entertainment we've seen in years, these fucking Dorito pod pissants are getting on their keyboards going, man, The Rock is fucking egotistical, isn't he? He's taking time. He's got to get out of here, man. You're not saving anything. Just leave. Just leave here, man. Why are you back? The Rock is so fucking... I, I just can't stand The Rock. The Rock is in it for himself, man. He's a final boss in real life, man. He's the boss and he's going to put himself in main events. He's going to give himself all the time that he wants. He's going to take the time from the talent. Do they hear themselves? These are the same fucking clowns that went, we can't see Rock and Roman, that's too much of a dream match. We gotta see Cody and Roman part two. How's that working out for you? Are you excited? Yeah? You, ex you giggling? Yeah, you're gonna call your mom after this and be like, Mom, I, we're 12 nights away from Cody and Roman. You're getting all giggly, you're getting those jitters. You're gonna get to see Cody and Roman part two. Is Cody gonna finish some stories? Yeah. Nice, nice. Gonna finish some stories. How's that working out? You're excited because the numbers are telling me you're not excited. The numbers are saying when The Rock leaves, so does the viewership. Over 100,000 people didn't even want to see Cody and Roman trade words. And guess what? They didn't miss anything. They didn't miss anything. Do you know what Cody told Roman on Friday night? Uh, so, uh, mow the grass on a rainy day because the sun will shine through the posy blood uh, roses uh, I don't know something like that and then Roman told Cody he likes chocolate chip uh, chocolate chip cookies on a Tuesday afternoon between four and five with a nice tall glass of lemonade with a slight touch of skim milk something like that I, I don't fucking know what they were saying because it wasn't memorable it wasn't fun I was live with you guys I was waiting to be entertained I couldn't wait to tell you guys live man this is good instead you know what happened Solo and Jimmy showed up, and then Jay and Seth showed up. You remember they were selling the whole thing as, nobody's going to be there. It's Cody and Roman. What's going to happen? Everybody shows up, and they stare at each other. Oh, we were shook. We were shook. We were live on Friday. We were shook. We were like, whoa. And you guys were like, PC, whoa. And I was like, unit, whoa. They're staring at each other. 
They stared at each other, and we faded to black, and we were like, whoa, it's WrestleMania season, bitches. It's WrestleMania season. 2.235. Two weeks before Mania is unacceptable. All joking aside, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable that your main event Part two, by the way, this is supposed to be more suspense. This is supposed to be a better build. This is supposed to be a better story. Instead, there is no story. The story is rehashing 39's finish the story. That ended at 39. This is a completely different book. Nothing was even built in 2023. The dude fought Judgment Day 70 times. That was it. They never crossed paths. One time they crossed paths at the end of 2023, and it was, it was irrelevant to, the, to whatever they're doing at Mania. Nothing happened. So for all intents and purposes, they never crossed paths. Cody never even spoke of this fucking story. Nothing. And here we are. Here we are. And yet, it's The Rock. The Rock is still being blamed. Why is he still on TV? He's taking up spots. Freaking part-timer. I, I'm convinced these people can't stay on The Rock because they see in The Rock what they will never accomplish, right? They go to their nine to fucking five. They can't stand their miserable life or existence or fucking career or job. They wish they had a career. And they grind and they grind and they grind. And there's nothing wrong with that until you have jealousy and envy for others, right? That's when it becomes an issue. When you start looking at others and go, I wish I had that, man. The Rock comes back as the most powerful dude in Hollywood. He brings eyeballs. He gives us the most entertainment we had in years. And you cry about it. You literally fucking cry about it. Then you get t-shirts going, I'm a crybaby. I'm a crybaby. I'm a crybaby. I'm a Cody crybaby. This is where we are. And then you buy a fucking ticket. Some of you actually have a female next to you, and you scream diarrhea at the ring. And then you wonder why pro wrestling's in the fucking shitter. Because everything is fucking ass backwards. The people we should want to see and give that accolades to because they're entertaining us. The superstars like The Rock. We're going, put him at 5 a.m. in the elimination chair. We don't need to see The Rock. Can you give us, yeah, can we, can we start the book Bronson Reed? Yeah, I think Bronson's got the potential. Can we get Ricochet in that main event? Uh, what I tell you about Rock, why is he in the room? Get The Rock at the elimination chamber 5 a.m. I'm going to need to see more Ricochet and Bronson, please. Ricochet and Bronson. But Ricochet and Bronson have been doing this months, years for Ricochet and on the main roster, Bronson, many, many, many months before Rock showed up. Tazawa, Seth Rollins has had years to try to get to another level. But when The Rock comes back, it's The Rock's fault that Seth cannot reach that next level. It's The Rock's fault that Cody can't reach the next level. It's The Rock's fault that Ricochet cannot reach the next level. That John Gargano or Austin Theory or Ivar, Kaiser, Gunther, nobody can get to the next level because The Rock is blocking the highway. I wonder if these people truly understand how fucking dumb... That sounds. If The Rock came back every year at Mania season and grabbed the main event, maybe we can talk. Even then, I'd probably say because he would be, the most entertaining part would be The Rock. But maybe we could... 12 fucking years this guy has last had a match. Not counting the Eric Rowan, I think, SummerSlam thing. Was that what it was? Or was that WrestleMania? It's like a 27-second impromptu. Not counting that. The guy hasn't wrestled in 12 fucking years. We're acting like this guy is the biggest fucking nuisance to pro wrestling. 
We're acting like this dude is not the most entertaining motherfucker in that locker room. It is weird, man. It is weird. That a portion of the wrestling fans are helping to destroy professional wrestling. It's fucking wild. But that's what's happening. Two point two three five. Cody and Roman together. The Rock was by himself. This fucking guy was told, "Can you go out there and entertain for twenty minutes and sell all the main events? Can you go out there, sell your tag match, try to try to fucking uh, remind people of Cody and Ro- can you do all of that?" And The Rock went out there, thanks to him and Brian Gerwitz sitting down and going, "How can we put together an entertaining twenty minutes?" And he pulls the trifecta, the equal, the the, the same, what's equal to baseballs cycle he did the trifecta right he did the the scathing promo he did the sing-along and he did story time and he gave triple h 30 seconds back he ended up being short on his time he didn't need the full 20 minutes and the report immediately after you guessed it was just bashing the rock the rock went over his time and took time away from the talent and other segments that those were the big headlines over the next 24 hours These fuckers didn't know what they were talking about. They just wanted to bash The Rock, right? They wanted to paint The Rock in some villainous way. They wanted to paint the picture that The Rock coming back is so fucking tragically bad for pro wrestling. If it wasn't for Brian Gerwitz just shattering those stories and reports and saying, actually, we gave 30 seconds back, you would have still ran with that. There's reports talking about the talent and TKO. Upset with The Rock because of the profanity and they really wish The Rock would lead by example, right? And it's starting to feel like Vince McMahon's era until The Rock said, this story is complete horseshit. The Rock had to debunk that. The Rock had to take the time to debunk such absurdity. And this is where we're at in 2024. The Rock is being villainized for coming back to pro wrestling. To, oh, I don't know, give the fucking product some entertaining aspects to it. What a fucking concept! Two point three five. For Cody and Roman together. Two, two, three, five. My bad, not a two, three. Two point two, three. Cody and Roman together, working together to tank the SmackDown rating. Everything that The Rock tried to build, Cody and Roman are destroying it. But oh yeah, stuff The Rock at 5 a.m. at the Elimination Chamber. We don't need The Rock. Really? Because Raw's ratings are in the fucking shitter. SmackDown's ratings are headed the same way. Looks to me like you could really use The Rock. Anyway, on to something, but smash that fucking up too. I've dropped nothing but facts. Smash the up. Don't be a bitch boy or a crybaby Karen. Smash the fucking up. Nothing but facts here. Relax. These are facts. It's time to grow a set and understand what is fact from fiction. Unfucking real, man. Be amazed how many fans think they know everything about pro wrestling. They really do because they have 140 characters and their grubby fucking paws are going to start fucking start the next tag of hashes. I don't care fucking how many hash browns there are. Start thinking. Because now we're in a WrestleMania season that fucking sucks. The worst WrestleMania season I have ever fucking witnessed. 100 on the ups. I appreciate that. That's more like it. Worst WrestleMania season I've ever fucking seen. And we're going to see if this card tonight, in just a few minutes, we're going to see if this fucking card is going to do anything to make it better. 
But first, a little bit, a little bit of fun. Let, let's laugh a little bit, right? Let's let's have a, a little uh, a little laugh. Drew McIntyre, who's been crushing it as of late, right up there with The Rock, using his social the right way, like MJF used to do it before his hiatus, like Bray Wyatt used to do before we unfortunately lost the man himself, Bray Wyatt. But there's a select few that know how to use their time out of the ring when the red light is not on, when they're not on these TV shows. Only a select few know how to carry their character via their social, via everywhere they go. And Drew McIntyre is doing that. We've been covering on this channel nonstop. Earlier, we put up an upload, just about 11 or 12 minute upload. And a big piece of that was Drew McIntyre slamming Seth Rollins with a Simpsons reference. I won't get into it. You guys got to check it out. But after he rolled up to Chicago, he gets out of his car and he's at Mindy's Bakery. You guys remember the famous Mindy's Bakery from CM Punk's uh, media scrum. And he's sitting there chowing down on Mindy's Bakery. He gives him a shout out. And Drew McIntyre, first he gets out of the car, and then he locks his, he locks, oh, let me lock this. He says, we are in Chicago. So he locks his car. Goes up to Mindy's, and he says, you got to be kidding me. What, what kind of bake shop is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays? You know what? That actually makes sense. It's probably garbage anyway. <laughs> Mindy's is actually closed. And upon research, it actually is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. So Drew McIntyre rolled up. It's closed. He says, you know what? Probably garbage anyway, just like CM Punk. And he pans down and he's got a CM Punk shirt, but instead spray painted over it's DM Hunk. <laughs> and he says, showtime. And that's where his clip ends. So we expect Drew to attack Cody tonight or have something between Drew and Cody. Right, And I'll tell you why I believe that too, because when we get to the uh, preview for Raw, the way that WWE worded this, you got to believe that even with the, even with the injury that Punk has, the, there's, there could actually be physicality here, or at least Drew is going to get the upper hand somehow. Even if that is verbally, I don't know how they wouldn't come to blows. I'll, I'll tell you exactly how WWE worded it. It's got to involve Drew McIntyre. This is too good. They're both... You know what Drew did? Drew somehow made it to the point where we wanted to see Seth and CM Punk more than anything. But I actually don't mind seeing Drew and Punk just the same, if not more. <laughs> Drew and Punk is becoming the, the better camaraderie, if you will. That's becoming the better matchup. Because Seth and Cody, Seth and, and CM Punk have just kind of uh, it's ran its course. Seth, Seth is doing nothing of relevance. Seth Rollins, I don't know what this dude's doing actually, man. But I, I'm gonna you, you want a billion percent amplified truth? I'm gonna be honest with you guys, like I always am. Seth Rollins just seems like he's lost. Uh, it's like he 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 has his hand in everybody's cookie jar, but. But only like a piece of a finger in each, you know, like he can't really get the whole hand in anything. So he's got like a finger here, a finger there, but it's, I can't say I want to see Drew and Seth for anything Seth is doing. I definitely don't need to see Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth based on anything Seth is selling us. I certainly don't need Damian Priest cashing in on a Sethington Rollins or anything to do with Seth's title. And Seth and CM Punk somehow has gone completely stale. Drew's keeping his part alive. Seth kind of... I don't know, man. WrestleMania season. This is where all the stars should be shining the brightest. And I feel like Seth Rollins has completely shriveled up. WrestleMania season came along and Seth Rollins curled up in a ball and hid. Wild man. I, I don't understand what's going on with Rollins, but I, you know, it starts with the character. It, it, it's, it, you can tell when you're a fan like BC and most of you guys, you can tell when the character doesn't believe in the character they're portraying. They don't believe in themselves. And you can tell that Seth doesn't know what this character is. He's got this weird sing along. Sometimes he's like the Joker, Seth. And most of the time now, he's just regular old Seth, just dressing funny. So it's like, what is the character? You don't know. 
you always knew what you were getting with the Warrior. You always knew what you were getting with Savage. You always knew what you were getting with Piper. You always knew what you were getting with Papa Shango. You always knew what you were getting with Undertaker. You knew what you were getting with the Mountie or the Big Boss Man. You always knew what you were getting with Batista or Randy Orton, no matter how many times they change their persona just a little bit, right? He can be a legend killer or a straight up viper. You can get, uh, you just made the list, Chris Jericho, and you could get, uh, what, what was the, you, what's the, uh, the heel when he was dressing up like the fucking Miz and Cody Rhodes and he's talking slowly, best in the world, Chris Jericho. Man, that Jericho was hard to sit through. He would talk so slowly. You can get that Jericho. You can get you just made the list. You can get Y2J Jericho. But you knew what you were getting. Seth Rollins, I don't know what this character is. And deep down, Seth doesn't know what this character is. Doesn't know what he is. And until that happens, unfortunately, he's never going to find himself. Um. So... Yeah, Seth, he's, he's got to step it up. And you only got 12 days to do it. You only got two Monday Night Raws. I don't think it's going to happen before Mania, guys. And Mania, we expect him to lose his title. And then he's going to go away for a little bit, uh, deal with some nagging injuries. And I hope then, when he takes that time off, I hope then he comes back with just a clear conscience, knows what he's got to do, and tackles it. But, man, he needs a reset hardcore. Because you take that sing-along away, guys, and that's it. I'm serious. You take that sit. Oh, you take that away. Whoa, it ain't good, bro. You got to remember, he was fledgling in the mid card with Austin Theory and Bobby Lashley in the U.S. title before he got that sing along. You guys remember? Nobody gave a shit. That's how we know, man. And then he got the sing along, and and that's when he started getting over again. Um, Alexa Bliss, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but Alexa Bliss does look like she is coming back for SummerSlam. That was the initial word that we were hearing anyway. It was just a rumor, but we're starting to see little, like, little evidence here, little evidence there. You know, when Triple H broke that, that it was coming to Ohio, and she immediately puts up the OH. She's, of course, two hours away from Cle- uh, Cleveland, Columbus, Ohio, where she, that's her hometown. So, it's a big homecoming for her if she can come back for SummerSlam. And then this workout... There's clips of her working out, so she's back in the gym shedding the mom bod and getting back into that ring bod shape. And and the workout, man, this is like with purpose. This isn't just like somebody who's just trying to have a nice little Sunday morning workout. I mean, she's going to town. She's got her husband, Ryan Cabrera, and a good friend to her left, and she's zoned in, almost like she's got a goal to make, right? Almost like there's a date that she's got circled and she wants to make it. SummerSlam, Alexa Bliss. Now, do you guys care? Do you want to see Alexa Bliss? Did you ever care about her? Or I started to really get into Alexa Bliss when she was with Bray Wyatt. I just thought that was just a great team. Those two could do so much together. And it's a shame that we'll never get that again. But that's when I started to see the value that Alexa Bliss truly has. And not just... Not just somebody just getting titles chucked on them when there is other deserving females, per se. That's when I started going, all right, Alexa Bliss, I'm down with her. Now the question is, when she comes back, do they have something for her? So that's the news on Alexa. And sticking with the females real quick, Ronda Rousey continues to spout off. Um, and, and thank you guys for that uh, Rousey vid that I put up oh, it was a few days ago, two or three days ago. Whatever it was, that Rousey upload. Damn, guys, 45,000 views. Uh, 1,000 on the ups. You guys were, I I don't know what about that upload, but you guys really uh, enjoyed that. Maybe you were just shocked that Ronda would be saying. That was just some of the stuff that Ronda said, by the way. But she continues on. She's talking about how um, there was nothing. She didn't even want to go out there and perform for Vince McMahon because... I don't know. It was weird. He was weird. This, I mean, I mean, everything we already know, right? It's like, why say it now, though? Tell him. Tell Vince, right? Whenever I had a problem with my bosses, I told them straight to their face, bro. Could I get fired? Yup. Did I several times? Yup. <laughs> but I'm not going to wait till I'm fired. I'm going to tell you right there, motherfucker. I don't care if you're my boss or not. We got an issue. We're going to talk about it like, like adults. So I I don't like the fact that she just, you know, she took the dude's money and then afterwards she's like, oh, now I got to sell a book. I'm going to run this guy down when the rest of the world is already running him down. I don't always like the kick them while they're down mentality. 
She could have done a lot of this, man, right to his face and chose not to. But Rhonda is Rhonda is talking about how she would have liked to have worked under the Triple H era. That was a quote, right? Of all the and she does admit that she it's exactly what we heard. Her and Triple H, they had they had their issues. She even had to have sit down chats with Triple H because H was trying to sell her on exactly what they had planned. And she was like, I don't like mediocrity. And H was like, tough shit. I don't know what to tell you. But she would have rather worked under the Triple H regime, right? And you hear a lot of the females say that. A lot of their wrestlers today, right? Because he's Papa H. He tells them everything they want to hear. But if Ronda was there today, what is she getting from this female division? I would love to know. What are, what are you getting? Are you seeing how the female? Are you seeing how Shayna Baszler's booked? Do you know how Shayna's being booked? You don't, do do you? Because she's irrelevant. Shayna Baszler is a clown, perhaps more today than she was under Vince, if that's even possible. What does she expect she's getting? Naomi just got back. Naomi's racking up L's. Naomi just lost to Tiff Stratton. Naomi has lost to, who was it? Who was it just this past Friday she lost? Who the fuck was it? She took an L this past Friday. Somebody put it in the comments. That's going to fucking, that's going to bug me. But she lost to Tiff Stratton two weeks ago. She lost to somebody this past Friday. EO, thank you, James. And I'm not saying that EO, your champion, should be losing. But I'm also saying that if you have... De- I was live with you guys on Friday night. Remember what I told you? I said the, the easiest finish here is damage control just gets in the mix, right? Naomi wins the match by DQ. EO keeps her title. Nobody's going to remember that. Damage control attacks. Bianca makes the save. Everybody wins. Instead, they had Naomi lose clean. One, two, three, look up the lights. And then damage control jumped in the ring. What? Why would you do Naomi dirty like that? W's and L's mean everything when you just get back. What does Ronda Rousey think was going to change just because HHH is in charge? Because the second Charlie gets back, Charlie Flair is going right back to the fucking top to take fucking Ric Flair's 17th title. Probably by the end of 2025, Charlie will be having 17 titles. I, I I hope, I hope Rhonda comes back under HHH. I really do, man. Just so she can see the grass ain't always greener on the other side. I was a massive Rousey supporter when she got to WWE, by the way, even in the UFC days, by the way. Full transparency, huge Rousey supporter. I'll be the first to say she just didn't connect with the audience There's nothing that Triple H can do about that. The booking can take you so far. You got to do the other half. It just didn't mesh. And then she says that the Rhea and Charlie Flair matchup, that Charlie actually refused to go home and, and end the match. She wanted more time. So she refused the orders from the back. And I think the way that Ronda put it is Charlie put her big dick on the table. That's what she said. And said no. We're, we're going to have a good match. So good for Charlie. That's what I mean. At least Charlie stood up for it. Because Charlie knows she's untouchable. Vincent Kennedy loved Charlie Flair. The only person that loves her more in WWE is Triple H, Paul Levesque McMahon. He loves Charlie Flair even more than Vincent Kennedy. That's why I say you might see 17 by the end of 2025. Anyway... Um, Rhonda keeps chirping, man. I just, you know, you can look at that on one hand and say, hey, man, she's not telling lies. But you can also look at it. Why wasn't this said when she was there, man? Why, you know, the kicking somebody when they're down mentality, that's easy, right? Vince is down and out. Just throw mud on him. I get it. But, man, tell him that when you're there. You say you didn't want to go out there perform for this dude. Tell him that. Tell him your quorms. Don't just take the dude's money. And then when he's gone and you don't want to do this anymore and you decide, well, I'll make money writing a book and uh, I'll slam the dude. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Like that's when uh, this is a BC thing. Absolutely. I will start to lose respect at that point. No doubt I would. 
I can always forgive on mistakes, right? Second chances, even third chances at times. Absolutely. I can always give somebody a, a second chance, no matter how big the mistake. But moral character is something that you bring with you into adulthood, 20s, 30s, 40s, and beyond, right? And when that starts to be a thing, because you're starting to see this as a trend with Rousey, when that starts to become a thing and an issue, it tells you a lot about the character. Getting that way. Who was that? Humble85 in the chat? It's getting that way, unfortunately. And again, I, I such, I've had such respect for Rousey, and I'm such a big supporter. I don't want her to just become a, one of those bitter people that just has nothing but negative shit to say. CM Punk was that way for a few years. Now, I don't mind Punk today, man. Right? I, I didn't even mind Punk in AEW until it started again, but <laughs> he just wasn't happy there. But... That was just a marriage that had to end in divorce, Punk and AEW. But I don't even mind Punk today, but there was a few years when he left. The, the bitterness was, he was trashing wrestling, man, and wrestling fans, just calling it fake and it just degrading pro wrestling. And that's when I like had to put it, I'm like, dude, enough of this, bro. Like I had respect for Punk, but there comes a time where it's like, dude, stop. Honestly, you're just trashing all of us for no reason. And we all knew one day he's going to come back anyway. So it's all going to look ridiculous. You know, R Ryback is one of those people. Bret Hart was leading that way, but Bret knows when to stop himself. But Bret was leading that way a few times. And now it looks like Ronda just has one negative thing after another because it just was a failed experiment in, in pro wrestling. And that's not the way to be, man. I'm telling you, it doesn't serve well in the long run. So, I don't know, man. Hopefully, hopefully that's not the case with uh, Ronda Rousey. Hopefully, this is just sell the book, stop doing the interviews, whatever damage is done from the book. Try to spend the next few years doing damage control, I guess, right? And and maybe one day you can come back and say hello to the fans or work for HHH or do something. But at this point, they they can't bring you back because you're a liability, right? Any business owner will tell you. Your employment or your the, the contract they have with you, it is determined on one of two factors. Are you a reliability or a liability? And if a company looks at you as a liability, yee, yee, you ain't working there. Uh, how long we've been going? 38 minutes. What the fuck? Really? Damn, we've just been... BC's been on a roll, man. I've had like 12 coffees today already, and we haven't even started raw, which I'm going to need another seven, seven or eight coffees. Uh, hold on. Let me get the uh, the raw preview up. I have the matches already, but I want to I want to tell you guys exactly what they're saying about the CM Punk, because this is interesting. So CM Punk is returning tonight, obviously. Chicago, Illinois, 12 nights away from WrestleMania. And... The way they're wording it is the best in the world will appear on Raw for the first time since revealing that he sustained an injury during the Rumble match and would be forced to miss Mania 40. What will happen when the outspoken city, second city saint makes his return? What will happen? Right? Not what will he say, because that's usually what they say when somebody with an injury who has been gone, but he's not going to be getting physical. What do they have to say? No, they said what will happen. So they have some type of of face-off happening, obviously. They have some type of... Some type of combustible element that I'm hoping even more than Sethington. I don't even care about that right now. I'm hoping it's Drew McIntyre. Because right now, Drew McIntyre is firing on all cylinders. He is absolutely wrecking CM Punk um, on the social doohickey. So if he can see CM Punk face-to-face -face and have a lot of fun with the cameras on... That's going to go to a whole nother level. I want to see Drew McIntyre face off with CM Punk tonight. But Punk is coming back tonight to try to pop a rating because Raw desperately needs it. It'll be interesting to see if they can pull it. Next week, The Rock is coming to Monday Night Raw. That'll be in Brooklyn, New York. So the they know the ratings are in the shitter. Triple H knows that he is producing the lowest ratings in Raw's history from the moment, the moment he took control of the show. And now he knows for WrestleMania, this is no longer, this ain't funny anymore. 
He's got to start popping a rating, man. There's no football competition, nothing. And this dude's pulling one sixes for WrestleMania. So he's going to bring back CM Punk tonight. He's going to bring back The Rock next Monday. Now, match-wise tonight, they're chucking a bunch of matches at us. This is usually not a good sign. This usually tells you creatively they're bankrupt. They don't want to think about anything. So they're going to give you a bunch of matches. And Paul Levesque McMahon will give an extra minute or two to these matches so we can get a little bit lengthier. And we can all go, this is awesome! And we can go, what great wrestling action! I can see great wrestling any day of the week, twice on Sunday at the local bingo hall. I want storylines that are jumping off the screen, man. And I'm getting Jey Uso versus Shinsuke Nakamura tonight. What the fuck is that? What is Shinsuke Nakamura and Jey Uso going to do? Yeah, are we going to get 10, 15, 20 minutes of a banger, a clanger? Is Chicago going to yell this as well? Are they going to yeet? Is Jay going to beat the yeet out of Shinsuke? I bet you he's going to beat the yeet out of him. Guys, this is stupid. This is not even creative. You know what's going to happen. I mean, the, 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 the utmost. Mark my words. And this is bad, but it's a fucking a, a kindergartner with a crayon and a posty pad can tell you this. Jimmy and Solo will just end up like hitting the ring and taking out Jay or some shit, right? That's all that's going to happen. I mean, would they get bold and like Jimmy interferes and then they set up a, like somebody saves Jay and they set up a tag match? Shinsuke and Jimmy from SmackDown, by the way, but there is no brand split, or at least they don't honor it. And it turns into a tag match. I mean, this, this is Jay versus Jimmy. This should be so much fun, this storyline. It's Jimmy and Jay. You can't fuck it up. And they're doing nothing. Friday night, they're staring at each other. You know I'm right. This isn't fucking nitpicking, bro. This isn't nitpicking. We're having fun, obviously, right? The red light's on. We, we, got a, we got a show going on. Hundreds live. Thousands will be catching this over the next 24 hours. So, yeah, BC's raising the volume up another 10, 11 notches, right? We're not actually fucking angry at pro right? We're not going to Starbucks and power bombing baristas through the fucking barista table because pro wrestling is bad right now or I don't like Monday Night Raw. We're doing a show. So yeah, we're a little more amplified because we're having fun. But but my words are true. This is not fun with Jimmy and Jay. Most of the WrestleMania matches, the build, the storyline, the feuds are non-existent. That's the problem. So throwing out Jay versus Shinsuke out of randomness, throwing baloney at the wall and seeing which names it hits, Jay, Shinsuke, let's have a match. I'm just surprised it's a heel versus a face. Because in Triple H's professional wrestling, he don't give a fuck. Most of these matches are face versus face, heel versus heel, and the crowd is sitting on their fucking thumbs because they don't know what to do. They feel bad if they, if they cheer for a bad guy and then the good guy doesn't get the cheers. Or no, they don't, they don't want to fucking out-boo the other heel. What am I saying? Or out-cheer the other face. It's a fucking mess. Anyway, Jay versus Shinsuke tonight. Then you're going to get Sami Zayn versus Big Bronson Reed. Don't even say Bronson without saying big. Big Bronson Reed versus Sami Zayn. I, I, you know what? Let's just read the tag. I want to see how they're building this. Let's see how WWE's promoting this. Sami versus Bronson. Ahead of his, his big intercontinental title match with Gunther at Mania 40, Sami Zayn must first battle Big Brunson Reed. Brunson already lost to Gunther, dude. So I'm sure Sami will do. Zayn came face to face with the longest reigning IC champion last week on Raw, made an impassioned plea about why he will dethrone the ring general at the show of shows. Now, standing in Zayn's way on the road to WrestleMania is the massive Aussie superstar who is determined to enter the title pitcher by any means necessary. How is Bronson entering the title pitcher? Bronson lost to Gunther. Do you remember that, Triple H? Heel versus heel, and your heel Bronson lost to your heel Gunther. What do you mean Bronson's going to enter the title pitcher, bro? Think about what you're doing. And have consistency and continuity. And Triple H, if you don't know what the words mean, start to Google. Go to the dictionary. Continuity. Consistency.
because a podcaster should not be teaching you this. Ivy Nile versus Candice L- LeRae. Well, fucking A, bro. Had I known that, I would have just shut the fuck up 10 minutes ago because now Raw is exhilarating. We are going to see Ivy Nile versus Candy LeRae. The fuck was I talking about? This is Russell Mania season. Salute to Ivy, by the way. I feel Ivy has so much potential. A star on the rise, and hopefully tonight is that performance. But knowing Triple H, Candice will pull out some shenanigans and Ivy will just lose this match somehow. Ivy versus Candy LeRae. It's better if you don't even advertise the matches, man. You know what I mean? Just bring some shock value. If, if you're going to do this, right? I'd rather see Ivy Nile versus fucking uh, Handjob Holly down at the local bingo hall. Now, I know we're overworking Handjob Holly. We're putting her in every job or match uh, uh, possible. But there's not money. There's not much we can say. She's the only one kind of down there right now. Three Titty Teresa has been on a hiatus for three months. She said she had a toothache and she, she hasn't been seen in three fucking months. But we are expecting three Titty Teresa to come back and then she can relieve Handjob Holly of her duties. The point is, I'd rather see Ivy Nile versus one of the local bingo hall jabronis than seeing Candy LeRae and Ivy. Or superstar versus superstar. Use jobbers again. That way these superstars can beat the shit out of them. That's more entertaining. Think about it. You can have a fucking five minute contest with Ivy and Candice. And nobody's going to remember it. Nothing special will happen. Or you could get Ivy Nile beating the fuck out of. Annihilating Handjob Holly. Flinging her across the fucking ring, slamming her on her fucking throat piece, throwing her to the outside, ricocheting her off the fucking barricade, sending her over the table, through the table, underneath the table. That's fun, man, when jobbers get the shit kicked out of them. And then afterwards, afterwards, whoever Nivy, uh, Nivy, the, the Nivy fucking river, whoever Ivy is in a feud with, that's when that storyline ignites right after the match or during the match. But you don't have to have random matches for the sake of randomness. And that's what this is. Shinsuke versus Jay tonight. Sammy versus Bronson. Ivy versus Candy. Ricochet versus JD McDonuts. Woo! WrestleMania season. Ricochet and JT McDonuts. Triple H is just flinging match after match after match after match. At least it's not a tag team bonanza tonight. Last week, Friday night and Monday night, nothing but tag team matches to get to the fucking five teams that are going to be in this damn tournament or six way, six teams with the champions. So all we've been having is tag team match that nobody gives a fuck about because nobody cares about the tag title match because there's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five contenders. It's bullshit. BC, BC, is WWE doing anything right, man? Are they doing anything right right now? No! What are they doing right? What are they doing fucking right? Nothing! The whole WrestleMania season is a fucking botch. You can build this, but JJ Bulldog, James Shrimp Fajitas, Juan, Gruss 512, G Glover... Anybody in this fucking chat right now, stop selling yourself short. Stop coddling the balls of Paul Levesque McMahon. He's not going to notice you anyway, and you're not going to get a job with him. So start being fucking honest. You could be doing a much better job with this shithole called WrestleMania season. You damn well know it. A bunch of matches tonight. And, and what is exciting, everybody? What, what are you looking at, right? Because there's people, I can't wait for this. What's exciting these people if they're not the age of fucking seven, right? 
If they're not fucking eight years old, like what? How is a grown up? Let's just take an adult, that demographic, 18 to 49, right? Let's take a human being that is an adult, 18 to 49. What the fuck are you getting excited about? Ricochet versus JD McDonuts. Candice LeRae versus Ivy Nile. Sammy versus Big Bronson. And Jason versus Shinsuke. Jey Uso versus Nakamura. And if you're excited, wh- wh- why? Uh, are you going to see wrestling action? Are you going to yell, this is awesome? This is awesome? This is not pro wrestling. I don't even know what this is. This is not what I fell in love with decades ago, I can assure you. What I fell in love with, it didn't matter your age. It could capture the kids, but grown adults would have their jaws dropped. Grown adults would be in awe. Grown adults would be crying with Miss Elizabeth and Macho Man when they reunited. Or shook when The Undertaker and Jake Roberts did that to the Ultimate Warrior. How dare you? It didn't matter your age, bro. Nowadays, I'm fucking embarrassed by what I'm witnessing. There's no way you can watch with a female. Diarrhea! Diarrhea! What are they chanting, BC? Uh, uh, um... Uh... I I, I have to go get a coffee. I don't... I'm gonna shut the... Let's go get a coffee. Crying because The Rock is back. The Rock! We get to be entertained for three fucking months, two months. And that's, we can't even have two months. Crying. Oh, I got the rock is back. Go away, Mr. Hollywood man. The rock is all of a sudden the wrestling boogeyman. You know, I was hoping that WrestleMania season would ignite that passion again. I was the only one in this community, really. I can't say the only. I I don't watch anybody else. So, but but uh, I'm willing to bet I'm one of the only ones to have said from the jump that don't put all your eggs into the Triple H basket. He's not. He's not all he's cracked up to be just because of the black and gold era. And here we are, and once again, BC was right. I wanted to be wrong. I wanted WWE to just be rocking, man. And this dude's lost. And these shows could not be more disconnected from everybody. It's not a a shock as to why the ratings are going backwards, man. This is fucking bad. This is bad television. Can CM Punk save it tonight? We'll see. But I doubt it. The dude's injured. How much can CM Punk really sell? G. Glover, rock throwing Austin over the bridge. Undertaker sacrificing opponents. Kurt Angle being a badass. Mankind ripping his hair out. Many more moments that destroys today's current product. You can go on and on, man. I always bring it. Remember Shane McMahon, AJ Styles, their feud? Remember their feud? Going through the glass window, through the car window. Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon. The things they would do, the story that they had. Like, where are the stories? Why do they not care? Friday night we saw something. And it it, it, it just filled a lot of our hearts, right? It was LA Knight being arrested with AJ Styles outside his residence. And I'm like... Why are you not doing more stuff like that? And why are you not letting it breathe? Why was that a quick two-minute segment? That is something you literally sit on for 15 to 20 minutes over a commercial break or even two. You sit on that. And you sell LA Knight versus AJ Styles. 
Why the fuck would that be a quick two minutes just so we can get back to Santos Escobar and Raymond Mysterio for the third fucking time? Or so we can watch pretty fucking deadly and tag team action with fucking Doofus 1 and fucking Dick Ryder 2. Whoever the fuck they took on. The Good Brothers were back then. The fucking Good Brothers have not been on TV since 1946. And they bring back Anderson and Gallows for what? Why? Just to take a fucking quick L? You kept Gallows and Anderson in catering for the last fucking 65 years. What was another week? You let AJ Styles and LA Knight tell that story. I don't care if it's egotistical or not. B, motherfucking C, is a fucking genius at this wrestling shit. Some would say one of the rare things I'm really good at. I'll take it. But when it comes to this pro wrestling shit, I'm at the fucking top. Common sense, logic, research, into the history books, ducks in a row, due diligence, fact check. Anyway, salute. Thank you guys for joining me on this 57-minute edition of the preview. I, uh, almost to that hour. I'm going to go over. I'm going to... Uh, where, where are we? Hold on. Get out of that screen. There you go. Um, I'm going to stick around for a few minutes, if you don't mind. And I'm going to make sure that I acknowledge my amplified unit, my super chats. A lot of you guys are gold card members, too, by the way. So, special acknowledgement. But if you don't mind, I'm going to stick around um, and shoot the shit a little bit more. Um, much love, guys, up in the chat, by the way. You guys rock, man. I love having knowledgeable people. That's why I always say about this unit. It's not about BC. Why do you why do you never push subscriber? Why do you never say don't forget to subscribe? You're the only YouTuber that doesn't say don't forget to subscribe, BC. You're missing out on a chance to tell to remind people. I don't give a fuck. I'm not gonna urge you to do anything. It's about quality, not quantity. Quality. I want to know I have the very best subscribers, the best, the most knowledgeable wrestling fans. I don't want just a big number for the sake of a big number, and it's filled with a bunch of fucking idiots. Reese Monet, Scott McMinn, Humble85, Instant Regret, James Shrimp Fajitas, Joker, Pimpesus. They're not dumb. They're smart. And that's what I fill this unit with. 15-month membership, by the way, Pimpe Zeus. What up, BC in the unit? Pimpe Zeus, salute, brother. Appreciate your 15 months strong. And I was just talking, Pimpe Zeus, about it's people like you that make this unit top tier. Smart motherfuckers. I don't want just a big fucking number. I don't care if 100... I have 300,000 subscribers! If 290,000 were dumb as fuck, you have nothing. So no. I don't remind people to do shit. I don't tell people to subscribe or beg or ask. No, it's quality over quantity. And you know what? Doing pretty damn good. This little ECW channel... Choo-choo, it's a chugging along. And we're doing it without begging, asking, or needing people to sub by reminding them. Quality over quantity. I appreciate you guys big time, man. Thank you. It's a little side note. Where do we start off? Who was the first one? Sheriff Rivers, a $5 super chat. Five spot coffee, I call them. Sheriff Rivers. Ah. 
Let me give a salute, first of all. I don't always get to see Sheriff Rivers up in here. Sheriff Rivers, I don't know if you're still up in here, but salute, brother. Did y'all even realize that if Cody wins, he's going to SmackDown? Because Drew will be the champion on Raw. So, yeah. Well, it looks like Drew's definitely winning his title. But you don't have to worry about Cody anyway. Um, Sheriff Rivers. Um, Roman Reigns looks to be leaving with that title at 40. And, and I don't know what... The, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's people that get really upset with that. And I understand. Try At 39, a lot of us were upset that Cody didn't win the... But I don't know what you... BC, man, stop saying that, man. Stop saying what? That's what we're hearing. Roman is supposed to keep the title. He is supposed to defeat Hulk Hogan's record, and then they're supposed to start talking Roman and Bruno. That's it. Now, of course, anything can change. Last year's WrestleMania, there was an audible called. But the latest information we have is Roman is keeping his title. If you don't like that, tough shit. I'm telling you what is supposed to happen. That's that's what's supposed to happen. Roman's keeping his title. Cody is not winning it at 40. Of course he could walk out with the title. I'm just telling you what we're hearing. Roman, from day one, supposed to keep that championship. That's why they were going to go with the Rock match. The Rock was not supposed to win any title, guys. And this was Roman Reigns walking out of Philadelphia with the championship. I'm not understanding what is so hard to believe here. It was supposed to be Rock and Roman, and Rock was never leaving with a championship. So I don't know why. what is so hard to believe that now all of a sudden Cody is now in the match, because they called that audible, and now they're just going to throw the title at Cody so they don't ruffle feathers and piss off fans. Trust me, if HHH wants Roman to win or keep that championship, he's done it in the past. And he's the exact prick to do it. So, I, I, you know, wild to me. But anyway, Sheriff Rivers, it looks like right now you don't have to worry about that. It looks like Roman Reigns is leaving Philadelphia WrestleMania 40 with the championship. So Drew will win that title, but he will remain on Raw. And Roman will remain on SmackDown because he will still be champion. Colin, two spot coffee. What up, Colin? Can't believe WrestleMania is next week. 12 days, bro. Can you believe that? Next Saturday is WrestleMania. And Colin says he can't even believe it. Because Colin, for Colin and so many of us, it doesn't even feel like Mania season. Thanks, Paul. William F. Always good seeing William F. up in here. Five spots, super chat coffee. Is Iowa women's basketball with Caitlin Clark going to outdraw Raw tonight in the ratings? ESPN versus USA Network. I didn't think about that, William F. Um, that'll be the excuse, right? If, if Raw pulls a shitty number, they're going to go, well, Caitlin Clark was on. So it went from NFL football to women's college basketball. And I know how big Caitlin Clark is. But before we go there, too, by the way, that game ends at 10 p.m. So that's not even all of Raw. It should end between 9.45 and 10 o'clock. So that's over an hour of Raw still on the air. So no way am I using that as an excuse. But William F., uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that to a lot of people is going to be way more entertaining than whatever Levesque McMahon is putting out there. William F., salut. Fleck Guapo! Fleck, five spot, super chat coffee. I might be at Raw next Monday because people are telling me Brooklyn will be lit. However, I might be better off waiting till my birthday. Let's go Knicks. How about those Knicks, man? Jalen Brunson, the Knickerbockers, we are rocking it, bro. Nobody expected that team to be what they are, and especially not the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> They're on another level right now, man. It is fun to be a Nick fan again. But uh, yeah, Brooklyn is going to be pretty. The Rock is going to be there, Flex. So if you do go, uh, The Rock is being advertised. They're going to try to pop that rating. It's the go-home show. So if there's ever a time for Levesque McMahon to put out a good show, it would be next Monday. Not saying he's going to. And, and also, happy uh, early birthday, Fleck Wapo. Salute. 
Joker, 716, five spot super chat coffee. BC, it's been a while. Salute to you and the amp unit. Toss in one your way as I brew mine. Hopefully, punk brings life to Raw tonight. Joker, good to see you back, brother. Salute. At this point, I'm looking over the car, Joker, and CM Punk is the only lifeline that I see. It's the only shot of a pulse that I see in this show. Josh C, two spot coffee, CM Punk, King Crown, heart emoji. Josh, Josh C, it's exactly what I just told Joker, Josh. He's the only pulse that I see on this preview. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping there's a lot of fun, um, a lot of fun shit that's intertwined. A lot of spontaneous shit tonight that's next level, but mm, the show on paper is not looking too promising. Q Machiavelli, two spot coffee. Some people still think Triple H is doing great. Laugh my ass off emojis, crying hysterically. Q Machiavelli, yeah, there's there's people that just, yeah. I always say this about Triple H. There's fans out there, fans, I use that lightly. They, anything good on the show, they, they put on, they put Triple H on a pedestal and they say it's because of him. When anything is bad, they say it must be Vince calling from home. It must be the rock using his final boss status behind the scenes. It's always something, right? Always something. It's never Levesque McMahon. And for the last more than six months, it's been all Levesque. He's been telling you. He's looked right at the camera. He's been in interviews. He's been live on TV on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown saying, I'm running this. And nobody wants to take his word for it. Q Machiavelli, they can believe whatever they want. At least here, we know the truth. Dave Miele, five spot coffee. Bo Dallas is killing it on YouTube. He's cutting promos, cueing his and Alexa Bliss's imminent return. You got to be careful with that because you don't want to just do a bootleg Bray Alexa. So you got to do it in a way that's honoring and that will propel, that will do right and justice by them. Other, if it's done like that, I'm totally cool with Bo and Alexa. But it has to be done flawlessly because you are now working without the creative genius of Bray Wyatt. And all of these characters were from the mind of Bray Wyatt. You're, you're walking a tightrope by going this route. I'm not against it. I just... I would have to see a lot more of what Bo and Alexa, what they have planned for them. So, but yeah, uh, Dave Miele, from what I'm hearing, um, interesting. I'll leave it at that. I'm, I'm probably going to make a whole separate upload on that in the near future. Dave, salute. George Alvarez, five, five spot, super chat, coffee from George Alvarez. Smarks want wrestling to be more sports reality based, but refuse to accept the reality that most athletes and fighters fail and never get to the top. George, they just want instant gratification. It's a microwave society, right? It's a microwave society. Pop it in, press two minutes, and and even that, they're like, come on, they're watching the, 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 the time, right? How is two minutes taking this long? So they take the, the hot pockets out at a minute and a half. They're cold in the middle. And then they just complain all the way to school or to their job, right? The hot pockets are cold. They don't want to blame themselves because they put it in for two minutes, only waited a minute and a half, and now they're cold. But no, it's, it's the maker of the hot pockets. It's their fault. It's the microwave's fault for not being hot enough. It's always somebody else's fault. There's always something to complain about. There's always something we have to hashtag. There's always something. It's a flip-flop microwave society. And pro wrestling fans, man, if they just stopped and thought about what they're bitching about, right? If they just thought it through, like saying stupid shit like The Rock should be at 5 a.m. at Elimination Chamber so we can just get rid of him. What? Who the fuck is capturing your, your, your... Who is capturing your attention and your creativity and your your mindset more than The Rock? Nobody. Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, LA Knight, all your top bait, Randy Orton... 
Nobody is putting in the work like The Rock as in terms of captivating you. So what do you mean? Just shove them to the side at 5 a.m. and then get rid of them. What are you talking about, bro? You're taking the most entertaining motherfucker who's going to grace us with his fucking presence for three months, thank goodness, because nobody else is doing the job, and you just want to get rid of them. These are fucking idiots, man. These are straight-up fucking clowns. Ah, uh, George... It is what it is, brother. Salute. Ty Ty the Save. Tay Tay the Savior. Five Spot Coffee. BC, I voted Drew McIntyre as the social star of the year. He has been killing it. Drew McIntyre is in a, on a whole nother level right now, bro. He's on cloud nine. If The Rock was going to share it at all with anybody, it would be with Drew McIntyre right now. I can assure you of that. Because Drew McIntyre is putting in the work. And I mean off, off the, the TV shows, out of the ring. On his own time, that dude's putting in the work. Man. Drew McIntyre. I think the last several uploads, at least for a minute or two in like every one, I'm giving that dude some praise. That's how good he's been. Jimmy Fingers! 19! What up, Jimmy Fingers? 519 Coffee. I popped when LA Knight got a couple of years. In during the arrest. <laughs> no, man. That's what I mean. LA Knight, when you give them some fun stuff like what they did with Styles on Friday, that's when these dudes can can shine or at least get the chance. And this is what I mean. This is where Levesque McMahon has to go, what can we do different, man? I, I, I'm dumbfounded. This is a dude that came from the Attitude Era, Triple H. And he's putting together some of the worst shows I've ever seen. And I've seen 10 years of Vince McMahon recently. And Triple H said, hold my coffee. Start having fun. AJ Styles in LA Night from Friday was fucking fantastic. Why was that only two minutes? Why did you rush it just to get back to a tag match? Let it breathe. That thing should have lasted 15 to 20 minutes. The live crowd can watch it on the Tron. They'd be exhilarated just the same. That's when you really get to see if they have that it factor. And you're only going to help the characters when you put them in fun stuff like that. Instead, every week they're in the same positions. They either have a microphone and they're trying to fucking sell something. Right? Well, what are you talk about? Or they're just fucking wrestling a, a meaningless match, right? Ricochet versus JD McDonuts. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Jay Uso versus Shinsuke. Yeah, they're going to have a wrestling match with moves and holds and sequences, and we're going to yell, This is awesome. And I'm not even doubting they will, right? Chicago might be fucking screaming, This is awesome. No, it's not. You're never going to go back and watch that again. Every fucking match gets this is awesome, yet the ratings are going backwards every fucking week. This shit is not awesome. Stop lying. Fuck. Jimmy Fingers 19. Salute. Colin, five spot coffee. What up, Colin? And go second super chat by Co Colin. I got to give you a big swig, brother. Two coffees. Never needed. Always appreciated. Colin, who is a gold card. How long has Colin been? Hold on. I got 25 minutes before Raw. I'm going to see when Colin. How long has Colin been a uh, channel member? I'm gonna, I got to search Colin up in this bitch. Hold on, Colin. I'm, 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 I'm freezing the entire live stream right now. <laughs> I feel like Colin's been down since basically day one, no? Where's Colin at? Colin's got the gold card. Where's Colin? Colin, 13 months. I knew it. So we've had memberships for 15. So nearly day one, 13 months, over a year, Colin. And even though he's a gold card member, he's still chucking coffees on the side to BC. Colin, salute, brother. You're the best. Thirteen month membership. Oh, gotta read that shit too. Colin says, "Remember the Big Show? Brock Lesnar collapsed the ring on SmackDown 2003." I do. And then they they did that like three times afterwards. I think Mark Henry was involved in one. Big Show was involved in like two of them. I think Brock Lesnar. Yeah. So they do the suplex, and then the whole ring collapses. But at least they gave a fuck, right? 
Like, you just have to go back to doing fun shit like that. Like, not long ago, remember SummerSlam when, when Brock Lesnar fucking did the forklift and the whole ring was, like, almost, like, <laughs> upside down? <laughs> was it Roman Reigns who was, like, in the corner? So, it was funny, bro. And it was great. Like, this forklift had the ring all the way up in the air. I don't think it was supposed to go that high, but Brock kind of went into business for himself and had a lot of fun. And he jacked the fucking thing up. <laughs> Those are the moments you're going to remember, bro. Appreciate you, Colin. Instant regret. Five spot coffee. Instant regret. It's your man, Chris Underwood. All right, name change. Long time AMP unit member. Happy I could finally pop in. Always a great time being here. Cheers. Great to have you back. Chris Underwood, instant regret. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream, man. Hopefully I entertained you. We did a lot of screaming, a lot of coffee drinking. Dropped a lot of facts. Um, probably made some people cry too. What are you going to do, right? It's 2024, man. If your feelings aren't up in a fucking tidy bunch, uh, uh, are you even alive today, right? Everyone's going to cry about something, but instant regret. Good to see you up in here again, man. Salute. Instant regret. Chris Underwood. I remember, man. Jimmy Fingers 19, 519 says, BC, have you seen Bo's Dr Dream Dare tube channel? Would be great if it was legit, but I think Ross Sap debunked. Yeah, I I'm hearing that's debunked. Jimmy Fingers 19. So, I'll, I mean, unless I hear anything else, I heard that's totally debunked, so I don't want to give that any more shine. Um, But I think Sean Ross is indeed correct on that, I believe. Um... Hold on, somebody just came in. Brad Boyer, welcome to the go. Brad was a unit member gold status before, by the way. So I think Brad Boyer is jumping back on the unit. Brad Boyer, don't worry, brother. We we had that seat at the board of directors, man. We had that seat waiting for you, Brad. So it's so damn good you got that gold card back. Brad Boyer sits back. My gold card, my channel members are, are board of directors on this channel. So, Brad Boyer, we didn't fill that, that seat yet, bro. That was for you, Brad. <laughs> Brad, welcome back, dude. Salute. Jimmy Fingers 19, 219 coffee. Is it me or does Cody wear a lot of blush? Uh, no, you're right, brother. He wears a lot of blush. <laughs> He wears a lot of blush. I don't know what Cody's doing. A lot more people are starting to say how the dude is more of a heel than anything. Are you guys starting to... And these people are correct. I don't usually agree with some of these people, but like, you know, um, Cody Rhodes, uh, the five-piece suits, the smiling all the time, the, the way that he talks, the cadence. I mean, after a while, I could see why people just get annoyed, right? And this is coming from a Cody support. I'm not at that point yet. But this whole WrestleMania season, man, I've had to take a, uh, a few steps back on Cody Rhodes. It hasn't been the same. And maybe it's because 2023, he was booked atrociously ever since he lost to Roman at 39, laid down next to the rubber chicken. And the connection to Cody Rhodes has never been the same. I'm hoping that doesn't fully go the way, uh, fully away, because I do like Cody Rhodes. But, but I can see how people could turn on the dude because... I mean, his whole presentation is basically a fucking heel anyway. But they promote him in a way for the kids and the families to just scream at the top of their lungs, right? He's, he's got the red, white, and blue outfits um, when he wrestles. And he's, you know, he, he does all the make-a-wishes. He signs all the autographs. He is always smiling. So the kids and the families can really gravitate to him. So it's, it's a very weird thing with Cody Rhodes, man. Very odd. But uh, Jimmy Fingers 19, no, it's, it's, you are correct, man. There's a lot of makeup involved. <laughs> Brandy Rhodes is hard at work. I might have gotten everybody, guys, with 19 minutes to spare. Hold on, let me make sure. Refresh that, make sure I got all the supers, man, all the shout outs that I need to. Yeah. 
if I missed anybody, all apologies. The, the, all the whole list will pop up with all the super chats, and I will get you next time. Um. Uh, BC, yep, yep, Bordellas, uh, some people think same punk, it's been a uh, flag, William F., Colin, Sheriff Rivers. Yes, I got all of the super chats. Awesome. So, to everybody up in here, man, to the hundreds that caught this over the last hour and 20 minutes, to the thousands that'll catch this later. I appreciate you guys big time, man. Hopefully you were entertained. At the end of the day, it's all pro wrestling. We're having a lot of fun. We're turning it up to 10 or 11. <laughs> and it's okay if you've cried a little bit too. If, if I push the buttons, it's okay. But until next time, and there will be that next time. Jose, James Shrimp Fajitas, Q Machiavelli, Scott McMinn, Iman Perry, Eddie Brash. Uh, what do you got? Yes, I got Scott McMinn, right? Anthony Boley. It's so good to see all these gold cards in here, man. Anthony Boley, Ray Hunt, Renee G. Renee! What's up, Renee? Renee G's up in here. Um, Flip Flip, uh, Jimmy Fingers 19, Gruss 512, JJ, uh, Reese Money. Reese, 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 Reese. Uh, Dante Jaren 23 man so much gold up in here I love it you guys are the best love seeing these names up in here man Dante Jaren 23 Brianna flip flip Tony Partita deuces deuces instant regret Chris Underwood uh, Nick Sola Franklin from Florida. I'd love to be in Florida right now, by the way, man. Oh, this weather. It's supposed to be the end of March. Fucking waking up. It's 16 degrees and shit. <laughs> um, uh, Blicky, Pimp Jesus, Big Nang. All right. We'll be here through Monday Night Raw if I keep doing the roll call. But uh, to all you guys, we'll do this uh, in the near future, obviously. And uh, within the next uh, 16 to 17 hours-ish, the Monday Night Raw review. Maybe before. So just stay locked on the channel. I will have the full Raw review, man. I'll be doing my due diligence. I'll be doing all my notes for the three hours tonight. And I'm not giving any mulligans. 12 nights away from WrestleMania. Triple H either brings it tonight or we're going to have to call it out tomorrow on the review. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So tomorrow's review could be extra amplified. Such is life. Till next time, there will be that next time. Top guys, we're out. BC, say and check you. Peace. Op times Trey. Dwayne Piazza. Mike Roos. Lawrence. Salute, guys. Three hours of raw. Get your coffees ready. You're going to need them. <laughs> You're going to need them. Salute. Go long.